Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Radiant Farming Channel. Today, we're diving into the incredible journey of aloe vera, the desert queen from the Aspodalacea family, a succulent from the genus aloe. This succulent plant hails from the sun-scorched Arabian Peninsula, but it's now thriving all over the world. Aloe vera thrives in warm climates and well-draining sandy soils, typically found in arid or desert-like areas. Aloe is grown for its medicinal and food industry uses, with its precious leaves containing valuable gel praised for its healing properties and many applications in skin care, herbal remedies, and dietary supplements. Did you know that the world produces between 100,000 and 150,000 tons of aloe vera each year? Heavyweights like Mexico, China, India, South Africa, and various nations across Africa and Latin America are leading the charge. Mexico alone, with vast farmland suitable for large-scale production, dedicating around 27,181 acres to its cultivation, has crowned itself the global aloe vera capital. Plantations are mostly located in states with arid and semi-arid climates, providing the ideal conditions for aloe growth. In the state of Puebla, one of the world's largest aloe vera farms is located. With just 20 leaves, you can get nearly four liters of gel, but it's a true art form. So, how do those thick, juicy leaves transform into the magical aloe vera gel? We travel to the source to bring you the full story. Please join us through this practical video. Aloe vera cultivation begins with propagating the plants, typically done using shoots from mature plants. These are grown in nurseries until their roots develop strong. Once ready, they are transplanted to the main fields. The seedlings are planted with enough space between them to allow room for growth. Farmers create raised beds, allowing for better air circulation and easier harvesting. Although aloe is drought tolerant, irrigation is still crucial for its growth. The success of these plantations relies heavily on access to water. To ensure proper irrigation, farmers channel water from local rivers to the beds, ensuring the plants receive the necessary moisture. Aloe vera plants are watered regularly, but not excessively, as they do not tolerate being waterlogged. It's important to keep the roots from sitting in water to maintain their health. A warm, sunny climate and well-draining soil are optimal conditions for aloe vera growth. It takes 18 to 24 months for aloe vera to fully mature. As the leaves grow large enough, water stored inside transforms into a slimy gel containing over 100 bioactive compounds, including vitamins, glycoproteins, and polysaccharides, key ingredients that give aloe its moisturizing and healing effects. Therefore, farmers must wait 20 for months before they can harvest. Mature leaves can be harvested when they reach about 16 to 23 inches in length and the proper thickness. Leaves are cut at the base so the plant can continue growing and producing new leaves. One special characteristic is that farmers can harvest continuously from the same plant for four to five years, with a harvest cycle every six to eight weeks. Harvesting aloe vera is a manual process where workers carefully select the outermost mature leaves leaving the inner ones to continue growing. Leaves are cut close to the base to maximize the amount of gel that can be extracted. They use sharp knives or specialized cutting tools to minimize damage and ensure the leaves are in the best condition for processing. 
Harvesting is done early in the morning to prevent gel loss due to heat. Each harvested leaf weighs at least 1.1 pounds, and around 7.5 tons of leaves are harvested daily from one plantation in Mexico. The harvested aloe vera leaves are then transported to the processing facility in temperature-controlled trucks to prevent degradation during transportation. Processing begins with washing and sanitizing the aloe leaves to remove any dirt, impurities, or potential contaminants. This step ensures that the leaves are clean and safe for further processing. After washing, the gel extraction phase begins. The base and edges of the leaves are removed first to speed up the gel extraction process. Skilled workers carefully slice along the edges of the leaves with sharp knives to reveal the thick gel inside. This task is mainly done by hand because the irregular shape of the leaves makes them difficult for machines to handle efficiently. Workers use sharp tools and precise techniques to extract the gel from the outer rind without damaging it. This manual method not only minimizes waste, but also ensures the highest quality gel is extracted. Some large manufacturers use mechanical methods with rollers or brushes to gently obtain the gel. The remaining leaf parts after processing are returned to the soil as fertilizer. The gel blocks are then collected into containers for filtering and stabilization, where they undergo quality control and the removal of any residual leaf fragments. Aloin, also known as aloe latex, a yellow, bitter-tasting liquid found between the outer rind and inner gel of the aloe leaf, can irritate the skin or have strong laxative effects if consumed. However, the FDA withdrew them in 2000 to emit potential cancer-causing concerns. People should avoid consuming aloin because high concentrations of it may lead to dehydration, diarrhea, stomach cramps, or kidney failure. Therefore, during aloe processing, aloin is carefully removed by rinsing the aloe gel blocks multiple times with clean water to ensure the gel is safe for use in skincare and health products. The gel blocks are then mashed into pure aloe vera gel and passed through filters to remove any impurities. Filtering completely removes leaf tissue, aloin, and other foreign elements that could affect the clarity, texture, and consistency of the gel. Filtration methods may include screen filtration, centrifugation, or ultrafiltration, depending on the desired purity and viscosity of the gel. The stabilization process maintains consistency, prevents spoilage, and extends shelf life by adjusting pH and adding ascorbic acid for preservation. Since this gel is difficult to handle and transport in its natural state, it is chilled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature change makes the gel thicker and easier to pack into 53-gallon containers for storage. The entire process from leaf to gel takes about three hours. But before the gel is sent to market, each container must pass rigorous quality testing. Samples from each container are taken for laboratory analysis to detect any impurities or harmful bacteria. If a sample does not meet sanitation standards, it is discarded. This type of analysis takes about an hour to complete. Only when a container passes lab tests is it allowed to be shipped out. Aloe vera juice is a nutritious drink that is thoroughly pasteurized to remove bacteria and ensure safety. The juice is then bottled in a sterile environment, preserving its freshness, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants for maximum health benefits. 
Aloe vera is not only known for its nutritious beverages, but also for its multi-purpose gel. Aloe vera gel works wonders for soothing and skin care, reducing inflammation, cooling sunburns, and helping heal minor wounds. The global aloe vera market is primarily dominated by the Asia-Pacific region due to the growing demand in countries like China and India. That's the entire fascinating process from aloe harvesting to processing that we wanted to share with you. We hope that through this video, you've gained valuable knowledge and can appreciate the magic of aloe vera. If you found the content interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Share the video with your friends and family so they can also learn more. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our new content. We look forward to accompanying you on our next journeys of discovery. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.